This episode was brought to you by Skillshare. The only thing sweeter than a sugar glider is their diet. Hi, I'm Danielle, and you're watching Animal Logic. Sugar gliders, or Pataras breviceps, are marsupials, and they're endemic to Australia and New Guinea, but they've also been introduced in Tasmania. They're members of the Pataras genus, in which there are seven subspecies. Despite their appearance and their patagium, their gliding flaps, they are not actually related to flying squirrels. They're just another great example of convergent evolution. They get their adorable names from their adorable diet, nectar and tree sap, though they will also eat anything that they can catch, mostly small invertebrates. They vary in size depending on the subspecies and can measure up to 30 centimeters long and weigh up to 100 grams. The males are larger than the females. The different subspecies also have different coloring, but they're all countershaded, meaning that their bellies are lighter than their backs. This makes them harder to spot by predators both above and below, namely owls, kookaburras, reptiles, and feral cats. Sugar gliders live in forests and occupy similar habitats to other gliding species, like the fluffy glider and the mahogany glider. Fortunately, they all occupy slightly different niches and thus don't compete all that much. Sugar gliders live in denser canopies, in trees like pink bloodwood and black wattle. Due to their small stature, they are able to glide through these harder to maneuver, denser woods, easier than their larger cousins. Mahogany gliders live in less dense canopies, in areas abundant with grey bloodwood and poplar gum, which offer more open flight paths for this larger, less maneuverable glider. In order to glide, a sugar glider simply jumps and opens its arms like the Vitruvian Man and lets the membrane that connects the front and hind limbs do its work. Depending on how high they are, they can glide for distances of over 40 meters. Though these longer glides are rather uncommon, and they will typically only glide for distances of about 6 meters. They will drop about 1 meter for every 1.8 meters that they move forward. Sugar gliders are much more maneuverable than their larger cousins, and are capable of shifting direction mid-air to avoid an obstacle or to dodge a predator. Gliding gives them two advantages. They can avoid all the predators on the ground, and gliding is much more energy efficient than climbing, so they save a lot of energy as well. When pregnant, females will develop a partial septum inside their pouch, which acts like a little airbag for their joeys, protecting them from the full force of impact when landing. Their feet are well adapted for their lifestyle as they have opposable thumbs on their hind feet, which are very helpful when grabbing branches. Their second and third fingers on their hind legs are partially attached to make a grooming comb. Their fourth fingers are longer than the rest, and they use them to dig insects out of tree bark. Sugar gliders are primarily nocturnal and spend their nights looking for food and their days hidden away in trees lined with leafy twigs. They have rather large eyes which are well adapted for seeing at night. Like other marsupials, female sugar gliders have two uteri and two ovaries, and males have a corresponding bifurcated penis. This allows for the females to give birth to two joeys. Gestation, like in all marsupials, is very short and lasts only two weeks. When the babies are born, they're incredibly underdeveloped and crawl up into their mom's pouch, finding their way only with their sense of smell. The joeys then stay in the pouch for around four months. When they emerge, they will stay with mom and dad for about 100 days before setting out on their own. The males are good parents, which is a rare thing in mammals, and will take turns keeping the joey warm while the other parent goes out foraging. In order to help digest the complex carbohydrates in their diet of tree sap and gum, they have an enlarged cecum at the beginning of their large intestine, which stores bacteria that help break the carbs down. Sugar gliders are very social animals and will live in groups of up to seven adults along with their joeys. They communicate with each other using scent glands, visual cues, and vocalization. When it's particularly cold outside, sugar gliders can huddle together and enter a torpor state. This is a less extreme version of hibernating and allows them to significantly lower their metabolic rate to conserve energy. The state will last up to 23 hours, during which their body temperatures will drop as low as 10.4 degrees Celsius. They will also enter torpor if food supplies are particularly low, but when it's warm and food is plentiful, they don't enter torpor quite as often, reducing risk of being attacked by a predator. 
Despite habitat destruction, sugar glider populations are surprisingly resilient. Though due to their adorable appearance, they have become quite popular as pets. Unfortunately, captive sugar gliders face a lot of health problems. The most common of such is a calcium deficiency, which causes a condition called hind leg paralysis. Essentially, due to their lack of calcium, their bodies begin to pull calcium from their bones. If you do get a sugar glider, make sure to give them a lot to do. In the wild, they spend the majority of their time foraging, and in a small cage, they would get very bored and depressed. Give them lots to do. The sugar glider was a lot of fun to illustrate, and if you want to illustrate your own marsupial, but with a bit more personality, you should check out the course Create a Character Illustration with Photoshop on Skillshare. The course is taught by a children's book illustrator named Ramona Kaulitsky. In the course, Ramona will guide you through her entire artistic process step by step, from writing a character description, to gathering and working with reference material, to sketching, and studies, and ultimately bringing your little character to life. It's a great course for all skill levels. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 courses, many of which are illustration courses. So when you're done with this one, there will always be another great course to help you develop your skills as an illustrator. With Skillshare's premium feature, you'll have unlimited access to all of these courses, so you can build your skills and join a passionate, like-minded community of learners and artists. If you want to support Animal Logic and learn something new on Skillshare, follow the link in the description to sign up for two months of Skillshare for free. What animals should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. If you want to watch a time lapse of the drawing that I did for this episode, make sure to subscribe to our new channel, Animal Logic by Design. Thanks for watching! Despite habitat, despite habitat, despite. <laughs>